Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland, and you already know this. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory podcast. And we have had, oh my goodness, weeks of covenant. And it's just absolutely marvelous in our eyes. Father, we thank you again today. We praise you and bless you for greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And the covenants of promise, we're in it. We're, we're, you're in it. You're in us and we're in you. And it's just more than, than our minds can conceive, but oh, it's not more than we can believe because it's good and all goodness comes from you. And we praise you and we thank you in the sweet name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to the 103rd Psalm. Now we've been opening in the book of Ephesians, but uh, that that's being strangers from the covenants of promise. During the break, um, Dr. Weeder pointed this out to me. Now the 103rd Psalm, those of you that are partners, it's on every partner letter I write because of the first part. So, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, please. Every covenant partner yes, sir. on every letter, there are scriptures from the first covenant, scriptures from the second. And those scriptures are the basis for uh, my praying for my partners, the ministry's praying for the partners. And, and you get prayed for more than just once a day. I mean, you, you get prayed for all during the day at KCM and at EMIC. Yes, sir. Now, listen, the first part of it. Now, and you have to admit, this is Psalm of David. This is the most covenant man in, 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 the, in the Bible other than Jesus and Paul. Bless the Lord. He's talking to his mind his will and his emotions. We know that because he's talking to his memory. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness, there it is. And tender mercies. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. Hesed. The loving kindness right there is Hesed. That that yes, that one, Hesed, the mercy of God. Yes, sir. The most covenant, the hardest to understand for the Gentile mind, but the most blessed. And and Jesus responded to it. Bartimaeus, before he was healed, he shouted, Son of David! He called him Messiah. Have hesed on me! Jesus stopped and said, send him here. (laughs) Oh, yeah, (laughs) hesed! Who satisfies your mouth with good. Now, Mm. you being a student of the Hebrew language. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the root Hebrew word to things is word Mm -hmm. because all things were created by words. What a language. I love it. So here's what I did. You notice things is in italics. Mm -hmm. He satisfies my mouth with good words (laughs) Mm. so that my youth is renewed like the angels. And you go down here. Oh, man, he's merciful. He's gracious. He's slow to anger. Plenteous in Hesed. (laughs) Mm. He will not always chide and so forth and so on. Now, come over here. In verse 17, but the Hesed of the Lord is from everlasting yes, yes, yes. to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness under the children's children to such as keep his covenant. Mm-hmm. 
to keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of the word. Yes, sir. Coming out of your mouth. That's it. Woo. Forgive me, but I got a shout coming on me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. That's what they're listening for is the Word of God coming out our mouths. Yes. They react to it. You know Ed Dufresne. Yes, sir. Ed Dufresne's in heaven today. I miss him. I got to tell you, what a prophet of God. I wish I had time to talk about it, Ed. Oh, man. Anyway, he was, <clears throat> they, were, they, were, they had some real trouble financially. They had uh, they had a loan on the church and it was a balloon note. Mm -hmm. They were making payments up so forth. And now they, they, oh, they had to have $300,000 and they had to have it now. Mm. Anyway, or, or the, the property that the, the bank wanted the property back. They're just looking for an excuse to take it away from him. Anyway, he was praying and believing for that. So he was in a hotel uh, where he had gone to speak. And this is back when the keys were keys. And he's, he's getting ready for service that, that day. And uh, he heard the, the key in the door. He said, oh man, they've given somebody the key to my room. And he, he turned and to, to look, to step out of the bathroom to look and the ceiling had disappeared. Mm. So he stepped into the spirit mm. and here were two angels so big, if the ceiling hadn't disappeared, he would not have been able to see their shoulder and head. Wow. wow. They're standing there armed. He said, who are you? They said, see, we're your prosperity angels. We've come to help you get that money or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he just stood there. He said, well, what are you waiting for? They said, the command. He said, go. And they disappeared. Wow. 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 Now, just a few days later, not all that long, they, boy, they were up against this note. No bank would help them because the boy, that bank wanted that property back really bad. And he and his lawyer were standing there in, 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 in Ed's office and, and, he, and his secretary comes in and came in and said, there's a man out here and he said, no, I said, I don't see. She said, you better talk to him. This man came in there. He still had his jogging suit on. Hmm. I'm talking about keeping the covenant. Yes, and sir. boy, if any man was a covenant man, it's Ed Dufresne. Yes, I mean, this guy, sure. this guy was bold as a lion of the tribe of Judah. Yes, sir. And uh, this man still had his jogging suit on. He said, now, first of all, I don't like you. <laughs> I've heard you preach and you scare me. <laughs> but he said, I was jogging. He's a lawyer. And something told me to come bring you $300,000. So here. <laughs> well, what something was it? It's one of those giants. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That angel hearkening, Ed, Ed, Ed Dufresne's a covenant man. And he, he, was, he was pronouncing the word of God. He was trained by Kenneth Hagin. Yes, sir. And me. Yes, sir. That's beautiful. Uh, and that's something. And that those things were so big that the top of the roof, they, they wouldn't have seen, but about here up. And they're standing there armed. Doing nothing until he gave the command. They, he said, what are you waiting on? They said, the command. He said, go. And they were gone. And he went right straight to that jogger. Wow. <laughs> then he came to another meeting. And then he, he began to get involved. And so... <laughs> They, they actually owed 500,000, but this 300,000 got the bank off of them. And we're talking about the, to those who excelling strength, keep heart, 
those that keep His covenant and remember His commandment, remember His Word. Yes, You're sir. speaking the Word. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all of His benefits. Yes. So, this man then came back to another meeting. And they were, uh, of the, the, the preacher, I believe this is right, anyway, that was there was, he was receiving an offering to get this building paid off. And they, they still owed $200,000 on the bill and they wanted out of debt. And uh, so the lawyer is standing here in front and some, uh, this, I don't know, this is something like that. Have you, uh, is there anyone else that would like to give? And he pointed right at that man and said, what about you? And Ed's trying to get his attention. He's already given. He's, he's, he's already, but he's not looking at him. He pointed right at that man. The man came up there and he said, I have to repent. I miss God. He said, the Lord told me 500,000 and I didn't bring but 300,000. Look at Here's that. the other 200. Look at that. Wow. The angel was still bugging him. <laughs> See, God didn't do it partially or halfway. He did it the whole way. Yeah, that angel told him, just kept telling him, just kept putting it in his mind. Now, reverse that. That's the way the devil gets you to sin. Oh, he just keeps putting it on your mind. That's what it. happened to Job? The only sin in that book is curse God to your face. And, and he, he kept putting it on people's mind. He's afraid his children were going to curse God. His wife did it. She said, won't you curse God and die? It's, all, it's in the mind. That that's the only way the devil can operate is put it in your mind. That, hey, hey. You know, if you get it some morning, you're, you're driving to work and, 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 and you keep getting this notion. Well, you know, I, I need to send Brother Copeland a hundred dollars. Uh, hey, call me. <laughs> 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 now my angels are saying, uh, hey. <laughs> Here's the number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go online. Here's a website. Yeah. Now, hey, you have to be careful with this. Yes, sir. You can get in a ditch on this thing and, and you, you start trying to manipulate that. No, no, you don't touch that. Now, all over the Bible, that authority is there. We have through the authority of the believer and this, this authority covenant in that name. Mm -hmm not just over devils, but over the angels. The moving of the discerning of spirits yes, sir. is not just seeing devils. The discerning of spirits occurred that day and Ed Dufresne saw those angels. That's right. Brother Hagin used to see in service, I, so many times I was with him, He'd just be preaching along and all of a sudden just, just pause and stop and his hands start doing that. Yeah. And he'd just look up. Well, all right, I'll do that now. And, and later we said, Brother, Brother Hagin, what was that about? He said, well, I saw two angels stand there pointed at that man. Yeah. And then they told me instructions. I remember him. that word. <sighs> there was an angel that flew from one side to the other. Then another angel that flew and they were flying back and forth during camp meeting. Mm. And so he just repeated what they said. Mm. Well, nobody saw him but him, but he saw him. Amen, he did. This Psalm is from David. David understood covenant. David over and over and over. David hosted the Holy Spirit in the time of the law for 33 years in his reign. Isn't that, that, say that again. He hosted the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the tabernacle of David was a, is a tent meeting is what it was, there mm -hmm. wasn't a temple. But the Ark of the Covenant was out there for anybody to see the praise and worship happened 24 hours a day, seven days a week for 33 years. Interesting number, isn't it? Yes, it is. I believe Adam, was in the garden for 33 years prior to the fall. 
to fulfill, Jesus to fulfill that number of that. And this is how long David reigned. And in the last days, I'll restore the, again the tabernacle of David, which had fallen. Now, David did some... Well, I'd, I've never heard that before. Yeah. Thank you for it. But that has to be true. The first Adam had to set the pattern for the second, for the second one. Yes. He had to go 33 and a half years. Mm -hmm. So the second one, the pattern was laid. Had to be Dave uh, or Greg. I never saw that in my life. Yeah. David understood something about covenant. When he grabbed the two, when he grabbed the stones for, for that Goliath, mm -hmm. he grabbed extras. <clears throat> He didn't grab extras in case he missed. He knew that he had a brother. And there were other giants in the land. He was ready. We'll get them all. He was ready for that. There's something very interesting when he took, we talked about this earlier in the week, the healing of the land. There's a, there's a really troubling passage in 2 Samuel chapter 21 where the people had broken covenant with the, the uh, Gibeonites. And David will turn over some people to be hung because they broke the covenant. But he, he, look at this, he did not choose anybody from Mephibosheth, from that family. That's right. He wouldn't do it because he had given his own word to Jonathan, to Saul, to Mephibosheth. He turned other people over and they were hung to, to appease this blood covenant that Israel had broken under Saul with the Gibeonites. And he made that right, but he didn't do Mephibosheth. So That's he right. knew and understood blood Mephibosheth covenant. being, for those of you that, that haven't heard this yet, <clears throat> Jonathan and David entered into an actual blood covenant. Yes, they did. And so <clears throat> um, he, once Jonathan was killed, now this is a, this is a type of God that <clears throat> the Hesed, <clears throat> the mercy in that covenant was just driving him to give. Is there no one left of his family? I have to have him. I have to give. God so loved the world, he had to give his son. Give the best he had yes. in behalf of that covenant yes. with Abraham. So he had to have him. They said, yeah, this, this little fellow that's crippled, uh, down the loaded bar. Dry places. Yeah. David said, go get him and get him in here because mm -hmm. he's, my, he's my covenant son, my, the son of my brother of blood and he'll eat at my table. And he did. And he did. And he believed a lie that somebody had told him all those years and he's thinking David's going to kill him. Mm -hmm. And he gets there and David didn't kill him. Put him at a table, Brother Copeland. I love my favorite part. He was lame in his feet. Yeah. Put him at a table. You can't his nanny that. dropped him running, that, and and she dropped him and injured him. Right. So now he's going to sit at the table of the king. Here's the thing: sitting at this table, you can't see my feet. Oh, isn't that good? I'm just if my feet were, if I didn't have legs here, and you wouldn't know just the two of us sitting here, because we're sitting at this table. Now, I've been seated at the table in the presence of mine enemies. He's prepared, a, the Father has prepared a place for me and nobody can see my faults. Glory to God, that's covenant. That's covenant. And David understood this thing. Now see, Deuteronomy 28 talks about the blessing on the land and the blessing in the city, blessed in the field. We're part of that blessing as a result of this thing. And David will make an atonement with the Gibeonites because Saul had done unrighteously. He'll make an atonement with them and heal that land. He'll heal that land. And that's why it's important who your leaders are in your country. Our president, Donald Trump, has done something in his peace plan no other president's son of either party. He's the only one that suggested they increase their land instead of giving it away. Amen. Yes, that's right. And that is 
scripture, what just happened with uh, parts of the biblical homeland of David, Judea and Samaria, yes. coming back under control. Listen, that when I heard that, I, I, ooh, my spiritual antenna went up. Now that would be enough right there. That would be enough right there to cause me to vote for him because I want my country healed. Amen. Yes. That's a land covenant. Yes. And he's put it he, he, right now. We need the healing of this land worse yes. than, than yes. since Vietnam. Yes. And, yes. and we're in the spirit. We, we were attacked. We entered into World War Three spiritually over this virus yes. thing and, and all that. But I mean, here's a man that reversed everything. He put the embassy in Jerusalem. He, he, he reversed everything because he wasn't politically afraid of what's going to happen to him. Right. And now he's the first one to ever suggest you go ahead and increase your land. It's yours. You should do that. Amen. The healing name was given to Israel in Exodus, Jehovah Rapha. David is going to come in and reverse the direction that the nation had been on and it's going to cost him. He's going to, he's going to give over some men to the Gibeonites, but he's going to appease that, that oath that was broken by the previous administration. That's the way I'm going to call it. Yeah. And when he does, he's going to heal the land and he will host the Holy Spirit for 33 years of his reign. Oh man. Dear Lord. One man in covenant who understood it will turn it around. And that's all it takes. If my people, which are called by my name, if we will turn around, he'll heal our land. I'm going to say he's already healed our land. Yes. All we have to do is receive it. That's it. Yeah, that's right. Because he covenanted to do it. Yes, he did. Praise God. Yes, he Great. did. And, and that's, I'm standing on that. I'm watching that. I'm looking at what David did. And the tabernacle of David is being restored. It's a tabernacle of praise and it's worship. And it goes to that Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, yes. and all that's within me. And then it talks about the angels getting involved with this. At the end of Psalm 103, bless you, the Lord, all ye his host, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works and all the places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And you need to rest and get your, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Mm -hmm. Get your soulish man at rest. Quit watching all those statues being pulled down and all the mess you see on the news. And they're saying this and they're get into the word and bless the Lord. Yeah. And begin to watch the healing of this land. Oh, absolutely. There's a vision for America that I don't know that we've even seen it. That, that's in the heart of the Father. Oh, I've, I've already, the Lord's already talked to me about that. He said, do you think that our founding fathers had any idea what this nation was going to look like in a hundred years? Hmm. Of course not. It had never been done. And we're out of time. I can't even finish my story. <laughs> <laughs> you did that to me, too. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.